Welcome to this nine minute flow state talk break. Today I'm diving back into the surrender experiment by Michael A. Singer. I'm happy to revisit this book because I need the reminder myself. Lately, I've been grappling with indecision and a growing urge to control outcomes. In my experience, Controlling and overanalyzing is not only ineffective, but also deeply unpleasant. But don't get me wrong, what I'm about to read is not a call to let go or stop taking action. Quite the opposite, in fact. Let's get into it with the opening lines of the book. Life rarely unfolds exactly as we want it to. And if we stop and think about it, that makes perfect sense. The scope of life is universal, and the fact that we are not actually in control of life's events should be self-evident. The universe has been around for 13.8 billion years, and the processes that determine the flow of life around us did not begin when we were born, nor will they end when we die. What manifests in front of us at any given moment is actually something truly extraordinary. It is the end result of all the forces that have been interacting together for billions of years. We are not responsible for even the tiniest fraction of what is manifesting around us. Nonetheless, we walk around constantly trying to control and determine what will happen in our lives. No wonder there's so much tension anxiety, and fear. Every day we give precedence to our mind's thoughts over the reality unfolding before us. We regularly say things like, it better not rain today because I'm going camping, or I better get that raise because I really need that money. Notice that these bold claims about what should and shouldn't be happening are not based on scientific evidence. They're based solely on personal preferences made up in our minds. Without realizing it, we do this with everything in our lives. It's as though we actually believe that the world around us is supposed to manifest in accordance to our own likes and dislikes. If it doesn't, surely something is very wrong. This is an extremely difficult way to live. And it is the reason we feel that we are always struggling with life. Nonetheless, it is also true that we are not powerless in the face of the events unfolding around us. We have been gifted with the power of will. From deep inside, we can determine how we want something to be and apply the power of our minds, hearts, and bodies in an attempt to make the outside world conform. But this puts us in a constant battle of our way versus the way it would be without our intervention. This battle between individual will and the reality of life unfolding around us ends up consuming our lives. When we win the battle, we are happy and relaxed. When we don't, we are disturbed and stressed. Since most of us only feel good when things are going our way, We are constantly attempting to control everything in our lives. The question is, does it have to be this way? There is so much evidence that life does quite well on its own. The planets stay in orbit. Tiny seeds grow into giant trees. Weather patterns have kept forests across the globe watered for millions of years. And a single fertilized cell grows into a beautiful baby. We are not doing any of these things as conscious acts of will. They are all being done by the incomprehensible perfection of life itself. All these amazing events and countless more are being carried out by forces of life that have been around for billions of years. The very same forces of life that we are consciously pitting our will against on a daily basis. If the natural unfolding of the process of life can create and take care of the entire universe, is it really reasonable for us to assume that nothing good will happen unless we force it to? It is to the exploration of this intriguing question that this book is devoted. How can there be possibly a more important question? If life can manifest the DNA molecule on its own, 
How is it that we feel that we have to control everything on our own? There must be another more sane way to approach life. What would happen if we respected the flow of life and used our free will to participate in what's unfolding instead of fighting it? What would be the quality of the life that unfolds? Would it just be random events with no order or meaning? Or would the same perfection of order and meaning that manifests in the rest of the universe manifest in the everyday life around us? This experiment would not be about dropping out of life. It would be about leaping into life to live in a place where we are no longer controlled by our personal fears and desires. For lack of a better name, I have called this the surrender experiment, and to the best of my ability, I have devoted the last 40 years of my life to seeing where the flow of life's events would naturally take me. What happened over the course of these four decades is nothing short of phenomenal. Not only did things not fall apart, quite the opposite happened. As one thing naturally followed the other, the flow of life's events led me on a journey that would have been beyond my comprehension. This book shares that journey with you so that you can experience what happened when someone dared to let go and trust the flow of life. Let it be clear right from the start, however, that this type of surrender does not mean living life without the assertion of will. My story of these 40 years is simply the story of what happened when the assertion of will was guided by what life was doing instead of what I wanted it to be doing. My personal experience is that aligning one's will with the natural forces unfolding around us leads to some surprisingly powerful results. And there it is, The Surrender Experiment by Michael A. Singer. To be honest, it's this practice of surrendering, of listening, and observing that helped me create Flow State. The show. It was me playing, listening, and exploring with no agenda or aim to control. It's this practice of listening first that helped me decide to move across the world to Spain with my wife. It's this practice that continues to help me make the right moves without fear rather than just sporadically take action. That said, I have to admit, I've been struggling as of late. It's just that sometimes the moments of waiting and observing are much longer than what we are comfortable with. I'm reminded of the lion that spends most of its time resting, waiting, and observing. I think they sleep for 20 hours a day, I've heard. It's this time, though, that creates the energy and focus needed for the lion to strike effectively when the right opportunity presents itself. So when and how often are you stepping back from the execution to listen, to observe, before you take action? And that's it for this Flow State Talk Break. What would you like to do next? Do you want to jump back into work with either a 30 or 60 minute session? Do you want to take a break with some ambient nature sounds? Or do you want to listen to another talk break? Choose the video that best suits your mood right now.